Welcome. This is Carol Vixen Crindle, and I'm from SkillCheck Services. I'm going to talk about brilliant things to do when things are slow. So, I've been in the storage industry quite some time, so I've seen a lot. <laughs> Here are some of the things on my list. I found managers watching TV, sleeping on the floor in the office. Yes, that's been true. Watching YouTube videos, and they weren't educational. <laughs> on dating sites oh yes they were looking up their dates <laughs> doing their makeup uh taking selfies doing schoolwork on their personal phone literally playing candy crush in fact this one girl did it the entire time when i was doing an audit at her store <laughs> i kept having to interrupt her candy crush to ask for things <laughs> she did not like that uh the other thing is painting toenails um that was just a little weird one for me uh, reconciling the bank account and you know just shooting the bull uh, or gabbing to people and, and in hawaii they call it talking story <laughs> so uh, sometimes that's with a customer, that's good. Um, when you're doing it with your coworkers and not getting work done, that's not so good. So if you can lean, you can clean. And I think that's what's so great about this is that in our business, it, when there is downtime, I love the fact that we have downtime, but you can't do like these people are doing, either sit there doing nothing or the daydreamer there. So you've really got to have a focus and things to do and a list of things to do. I love that part is like, you actually you know, have to make a list. That's a good thing to do. So here's my daughter. She's awesome, isn't she? She's so cute, but I'm constantly telling her find things to do. She goes, oh mom, it's so slow. I said, find something to do. So even if you have a beautiful new store like she does, you wanna keep it immaculate. You And she, one of the things that they do is give out water to customers, um, doing security rounds, check to see if the bathrooms are stocked, um, and clean, clean, clean. And I'm sure that's one of the things she's like, oh, mom, I have to go to work and clean. I was, in fact, I just talked to her and she was doing laundry and stuff and she was getting ready to go to work. So I was like, woo, you could do work. Now she's working harder here at home than she used to. So that's awesome. That's like a double whammy good. So what if there's some things that I want you to look at at the property. When you're out there on the self-storage property, and this is your property, and sometimes when you get used to your house or your car, you don't really notice sometimes how dirty it can be. Uh, that, for me, is my car. Sometimes I'm like, oh, my gosh. And especially when my kids were little, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't notice all the dirty stuff. But now it's like, oh, I want my car immaculate. <laughs> but think about this. Look at the curb appeal from someone driving up. What are they going to see? How does the landscaping look? Things like that. And how about the office? When they come into the office, what does it smell like? Uh, is everything look good? Is everything look clean? Does it look like, and I, I think it should look like a bank. The inside of a bank, they try to keep it really clean and organized. They purposely do that because they don't want to have stacks of things where so you think that they're unorganized so they really make a, a an effort to try to make everything look neat and clean and organized and that's the way the storage property should look your bathrooms they should be nothing but clean and i know i know what customers do in there and it's horrible sometimes i've just well better than them going outside i have to say to go to the bathroom on your site that is even worse <laughs> so those of you that have been in this long enough you know that that's true and how about just the exterior of the property? How does it look? And what are, what are things that need to be done? And also review the spaces. Go look at spaces that are vacant and ready to rent. And then that way you can know what needs to be done. Maybe some of those need clean. There's a variety of things that could be going on with those. And I'll give you some examples. <laughs> Here's one. Look around. Look at this place. I I look at this and I'm and one this was easy one for me because I looked, it's like, wow, look at that thermostat uh that so one is the thermostat and then one is i guess the alarm right they need cleaned and the vent the vent itself I, i'm sure that filter has not been changed in i can't imagine how long because you think if you change the filter you might have hmm, that's a little dirty of the stuff coming out that's because the the filter is so dirty it's now made in making the outside dirty and look even in front of the floor and the floor itself is getting dirty from all that so and I'm thinking that whatever they're breathing, the air they're breathing in there is not clean either. So get that fixed. There should not, this uh, this should be noticeable. And I think, you know what, if you can't clean it off, repaint it. That's just the thing, just get it fixed. So when you're going around your property, you start to make notes. And 
fingerprints on the front door, the toilet's dirty, the 315 needs, because you can't possibly remember everything. So one of the things you have to do when you're doing these things and you're really looking at everything and trying to know what to do, make notes. So when you're, you know, start this process, Think about the cleaning and the organization. One of my pet peeves when I do these audits and, and I look around, I'm looking, sometimes I look for a highlighter, look for paper clips or stuff. I open up drawers and sometimes there are locks and look at this drawer on the upper left, ridiculous. That is just, it shouldn't look like that. It should be more organized and, and instead of, you know, keeping your overlocks in there and all the other things, you want to make sure you have a place to go for those where you always know they're there and just clean it out. And then you can have a place so you put those things, extra things somewhere else, but try to keep it more organized. And that's true, you know, for your rental agreements, um, move out folders, you know, put those away. I've seen people just stack them in the back until they're ready to, to do them later on or they do, do them a bunch of one time. I like to put folders, of the move out folders or the, the customer's folders away, uh, you know, whatever you've got out, put it away because then you're not thinking, hey, where where that folder go? Where'd that customer's folder go? If you always put it back, then you know where it is. The cart room, oh my gosh, that's another place that looks horrible. Uh, merchant, a lot of stores, um, merchandising area, the supply areas where you keep stuff, other supplies like extra supplies, the company space, uh, the office files, the move in and the lean files. We'll talk about more of those as we go. But one of the other things that I've noticed that gets overseen is a lot, is just the office uh, computer and the equipment cleaning. You need to have the spray, the canned air to blow out the dust and particles. And remember, do that. I think you, the, most managers are like, when was the last time you sprayed this thing out? Because they're like, oh, it's kind of sluggish. And we look in there and it's got, these are a little drastic, but when it's so clogged up and so dirty in there, it's just, it just stops working. It doesn't work anymore. And then you're wondering why it's, it's not working. <laughs> so the CPU should also be blown out and wiped down. The copier glass, the cleaning out old files, and, you know, sanitize the computer and make sure all the office machines have paper and, and are ready to, to use. So the other thing to think about is just cleaning the interior. So those, the things you need to be looking at is like cleaning and dusting inside the office. That means windows, do the windows, do the doors, do the, the closets, the desk again and, and the countertops, bathrooms, uh, the cart room. And remember, you're talking about sweeping and vacuuming in the office, wiping handles down, that is so important and the doorknobs and electronics and refilling any cleaning supplies. And, you know, especially if you have larger um, supplies of something and you're filling bottles and trying to save some money doing that, then that's, those are things you do when you have, you don't have anything else to do. One of the other weird things that I've also noticed in self-storage, it is very strange how we store our own files. <laughs> uh, it's typically not very organized. Uh, you see the one box here doesn't, it's got files in it, but it's certainly not labels. A couple of them here aren't labeled. These are labeled certain numbers, but I bet you I can't really tell from where the auction files are versus the just move outs. So I think it's important to have auction files separately. And um, those things you need to, I would keep by the dates, like a, the, the year that it was sold or whatever. And, uh, but I would like to see those in um, plastic or rubberized containers because we look at these boxes and I don't think that's from, it's probably from heat. It was these, are, this is probably an Arizona store. Um, so I think one of the things is that these boxes break down and, uh, and if you have any kind of water problems with this plastic is gonna certainly save it. How about cleaning the exterior? Gosh, there's so many places on the outside that need to be cleaned on a regular basis. The keypads or any kiosks that you all have, uh, maintaining those moving carts and keeping those clean and keeping getting them back to the designated areas. So if you're, you're doing a walkthrough and you see it, move those things to where they're supposed to be. And the roll-up doors, dusting those for cobwebs, locks. Uh, you know, I've, sometimes I go out and do audits and I, 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 as I'm doing the audit, I'm like, you know what, that, there are cobwebs all over that lock and around that, and I'm thinking, okay, the customer hasn't been there in a long time, clearly. However, I'm also thinking, well, the manager hasn't really looked at this because I think a customer would be kind of grossed out if they came to open their space up and then they had to get through the cobwebs. We, we need to keep those things clean too. And remember cleaning the, the parking lot area, making sure it looks good. Look at all the junk at this place. I have no clue what, it looks kind of like trash bags, but I don't know what the other stuff is. It looks like it might've been rained on on top of that. It just looks horrible. That should not be left on the property. 
So also check vacant units for cleanliness. And it doesn't mean, you know, it's been vacant for a while. You need to know that every time when you in the morning, you need to know all your vacancies and you need to know which ones are ready to rent and which ones are just vacant. So those are two kind of different things, especially if you've got a new store, you want to make sure you, you know, they're at five of each size or something like that. So, and you go to those. And if someone says, oh, can I get one closer to this and sh still show them the one that you absolutely know is clean and said, yes, but I'll clean this one out. Make sure that's, you know, everything's clean before you move in. So also, um, cleaning the, make sure the parking area looks good, the planters, the, the curbside type of look, you know, everything looks really good. And to check the vacant units again for cleanliness, the hallway doors, the push carts, elevator buttons, and the golf cart, all important things. And how about professional signs? I, I really like the fact that we have professional signs at my stores. I, I've always liked that. I just, I, I asked the managers, please keep the signs looking really good. Um, so no paper sign. This one says, do not open out of order. <laughs> I love that. Uh, but no hand printed signs. Everyone should be nice professional signs. And this one, gosh, look at this. It's been so faded from the sun and weather. It, you can, it, I can see fire lane tow-away zone. Uh, it does say no parking above it, but you can barely see that. But check things like this. And for that, they need to read. It's not just repaired or replaced. This one just, it's easier to replace these. So, and remember, if you have signage out there, this one says $100 minimum fine for dumping property under video surveillance. Clearly, <laughs> no one's really watching this because there's a lot of boxes right here that no one's really done anything with. I, if you leave stuff like this, it just tends to be someplace that people leave stuff and that you're not even, uh, if you're not keeping it clean, then they're not going to keep it clean either. So you need to be charging them for things. And, and again, it's nice to warn them like this sign does. But so how about this uh, space? You know, I, I'm, this frustrates me because I don't think if I opened this up and was showing this to a customer, I think the customer would be like, wow, what is that on the, on the ground there? <laughs> and I would have to say, you know, it looks like it's been oil from some, you know, the, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not even sure what all that is because some of it's dark and some of it's lighter. Some of the stuff on the left looks a little bit like it's actually still dampish. It does not look good. I think you should clean it as best you can. And I would paint over it. I would get like a, a marine paint and paint over that so you can get a really nice look. When you open it up, it looks clean and ready to rent. And if you don't know what to do, notify your owner or supervisor. Get them to help you. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to this one. How long do you think that took to grow that big? I think this is an Arizona store and it just, I just think that's ridiculous. Yeah, the whole store doesn't look really good either, does it? Now, this is a store in Hawaii that is not the same store as the past picture. <laughs> this is another unique store. I did an, an audit at this store on Hilo or in Hilo on the Big Island. And uh, it's interesting because I looked at that and I'm thinking, wow, how long do you think the downspout wasn't there for that kind of mossy, wet junk to grow on there? And how bad does it look? It looks horrible. And I think the customers are thinking, is any of that getting inside my unit or, you know, it just doesn't, and look, there's weeds here too. I just think you have to keep the, the store immaculate. You should, you, you leave something like this here and I, I'd probably try bleach on it first and then see what else I could do to get that off of there. And if that didn't work, I would say we needed to repaint these, uh, repaint this one. If nothing else, repaint this uh, like whatever silver color, whatever that is. Concrete gray is what I'd be painting it. See if we could get it back to where it looked gray. Um, wow, I love this one because this is the kind of hallway I love to see. Look at that paint. So you can see this floor has been painted and it has, has a, a coating on the top to keep it nice and glossy and easier to clean, easier to sweep, just amazing. So give that customer the wow factor. But even if you have a store like this, you're going to find that, you know, wiping down the walls is important and make sure you see if you see rodent signs or little June bugs with their legs up, let, you know, do something about it because it really stand out even on this kind of, of, of look. Uh, this beautiful, this is a beautiful hallway. <laughs> I love those kind of hallways. So also keep those bollards looking good. Look at this up, this picture up here. I, that, Bollards kind of, it's been hit several times, I'm guessing, <laughs> to give it that kind of nice slant. But 
it needs they need to be repainted it just doesn't look good and these bollard covers that you can get that just slip right over they're amazing and there's some here even that you can get that have um that show you like advertising things so those are nice too but remember keep them looking good if you want to paint them but it just seems like these bollards or covers are so cheap you might as well not go through the hassle of having to paint them unless someone really likes painting i did i've never known some managers that love painting i was like hmm, they were great at the stores but yeah it was still more expensive than the bollard covers how about the merchandise i think the merchandise should look really good and well presented in the office that you have some people have larger offices than others and it sure makes a difference because the better that it looks like aesthetically the more you're going to sell and you need to make sure things are priced because a lot of people won't ask a price for something they would rather if it's on there then they'll know that they can buy it or not that's there's a lot of studies about that so remember if you've got it behind the counter they probably are not going to sell as well you're going to increase your sales probably by 30 or 40 percent if you get it out away from behind the counter you want it accessible to the customers and i know some of you are going to say oh people will steal them it, it the, our theft and self-storage is very low it's probably worse on the outside of the property than it is on the inside of people stealing from other people, but not so much in the office. And if you do have a problem, you know, just put it place and put some video camera look or even a fake camera up so the people think that they're being watched. It's just a way to just watch it. Wow, the fencing. This is one uh, a property that I just recently did uh, looked at, and I was just like, wow, what happened? And they said, well, the the manager said the they had a bad storm, and you can see the tree went down. But okay, I. I understood they had a bad storm, but that wood looks like it's pretty old. <laughs> it, I said, well, how long ago was that? And she goes, uh, wow, it's coming around a year now. That that fence should not be left like that for that long. It's too long. It's, you, you, it's easier just get it repaired and get it replaced. Otherwise, people will come over that fence. It just doesn't look good when you're trying to sell your property. The golf cart. I chose this golf cart because it was clean, but it could be cleaner. I, I like it because generally, I mean, for most golf carts, this is like immaculate that I see. But I do think you, when you're cleaning it, make sure you get the bottoms or maybe get some um, under all, under all, is that the, oh my gosh, I have no, uh, anyway, the, the stuff that makes it look all really nice, the, the leather and the plastic, you can go over it and it just gives it a really nice shine. That's what will really make the cart look great. And you want to use the golf cart because it it's, it is not a maintenance vehicle. It is to get the customers to and from the space as quickly and conveniently as possible. And that's in any kind of weather conditions. That's why we try to like to have the covers. And I know some of you, they're in really, um, and in areas where it rains a lot, you even have a rain cover that goes over it. I love those too, because I've had rainy areas where those were great and easier to get customers to see the space and get them back out without getting everyone really wet. So, and check around the property too, because sometimes when you're going around the property, you think, oh my gosh, things are, this is what I found at one of my stores that I was um, auditing. And I, I come around the corner at this hallway and I look and I'm like, what is that? And there was stuff strewn all over the hallway and down probably at least three other doors. And I was like, what? And I, I looked in there and the people were um, vaping and one was sitting in the space and the other one was outside around the corner doing something. I found him later. Uh, so I went up to the front and I said, you've got a problem. And I told him what unit number. And then they went up there and tried to get them all straight because I was just doing the audit. I, but I kind of get bossy, I think, sometimes <laughs> when I'm doing this, trying to say, oh, my gosh, you got a problem out there. But remember, you do these hourly security rounds throughout the property. Look for weird stuff like this, because if you see something plugged in like that, that is not right. And they've got, look at like their phones and their vape things. Everything's plugged in there. And you don't want them using that because you don't know that there's ever going to be a fire from something like that, that they've got hooked in, or maybe maybe they are vaping inside there, which bits they were. But um, you want to also be checking them for the customer lock. To make sure that they're locked if they're locked in the open position that you're letting the customer know or maybe they're not locked at all and you need to contact the customer sometimes you can just lock it but with um, the disc locks we have to use a key to to lock those up so you have to contact the customer how about restocking it's another good thing remember you can restock things in your restroom refill the merchandise inventory you can prepare new rental packets for those that are, are manual uh, and you're not doing everything digitally. Uh, refill the candy bowl, the bottled waters that you give customers, um, brochures and their business cards. Get everything 
refilled that you can and restocked? Well, I I actually chose this manager's uh, cart room because I and maintenance room because I just thought it was one of the most organized. But clearly, if he if someone's going to keep this thing this clean and this organized, I am happy to do it. But I do think you ought to keep the door shut during the day um, if you or if you're not around because people steal stuff. Uh, and I know this might be where they don't steal something, but it's better off shutting it down but keeping it nice and clean like this. It looks uh, at least it's it's got a lot of stuff there. And for some of you really neat freaks, they're like, oh, it's not so clean, but it it is clean. I do think that we could use the floors repainted on this one too. But I'd say in general, what what a nice, nice cart room because I've seen a lot worse. Wow, where do I even start with this? I did an audit and uh, I was looking, I came around the corner and I saw all of this down one aisle. And I was like, wow, once you've started something like this, it can get out of hand. And I think you, these are all uh, recyclables that they were going to take off um, for their for their business customers, but I think it looks trashy. And I think that some of that stuff, like I don't know if the plastic here is really should have been, you know, the recycling cardboard, but they, they've got a dumpster. It looks like the dumpster might be full. I can't quite tell, but I'm assuming that looks, there's something sticking out there at the dumpster. But I tell people that if, you know, you bring in your treasures and you take them out and please don't leave them for us. I'm just saying it really as nicely as you can. But remember to cover the dumpster policies at that time of rental so they know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. It's important. You know, another thing that I like managers to do when they don't have anything else to do is think about marketing. And I have like door hangers that I've given for local neighborhoods. And I've said, especially I've got a, I had a store in Hawaii that I had, and we used to send out or have the managers put in hangers on the pe local neighbor's doors. And they just take a walk around, you know, weren't busy. And so one would man the office and the other one would go out and put the marketing flyers out on doors. In some places that's not allowed, but they could do that there. Uh, also, they would go place flyers on local bulletin boards at like um, the grocery stores, things like that. And remember, check your Google bus for business in your area. You might be looking for businesses, you know, uh, attorneys, things like that, and writing them, letting them know that we do have larger spaces for business records. So, and you can also contact real estate agents in your area. Remember to post updates on your social media and check your reviews because you got to check, you should be checking reviews constantly. And another good thing to do would be um, competition comparisons and rate surveys. So when you you can either call on the phone and check to see the rates. And I, if you have a software for um, self storage software, that a lot of them now have places where you can put customer your competitors' rates in. So it's a good thing to do. And think about marketing and ideas. Nothing else to do. Think about hey, how can we get more customers? Or look at you know we have a lot of customers that do this or do that. So think about that. How about just sales? Think about following up on these potential customers' inquiries. Remember to go to in the software that you have, any, any sales lead places that you're using, and think about improving your sales presentation. That's at skill check, that's near and dear to our heart. That's what we do, we evaluate people's sales techniques. So we know how important answering the phone is and getting better and better at selling. Listen to your previous mystery calls and recorded marketing lines if you have those. You can role play with other coworkers if they're there and you guys have nothing to do. So practice your presentations. I mean, if you ever want to get better at anything, you need to practice. And I, I know a lot of you know that I wanted to be an opera singer. Some of you do know that I wanted to be an opera singer. And that was my my goal in life. I probably well, I did. I started um, taking lessons at 10. And I'll tell you, I now if I was to go and try to be an opera now uh, I would have to go back for probably well it depends on what I was doing but the the opera I was doing but I might have to go through a year of lessons to get back up into vocal shape to be able to do that so I know how important the idea of keeping your salesmanship up and keeping all sorts of improvements going and improvements mean you have to listen to yourself and that's not always easy for people. <laughs> I know I, sometimes when I listen to myself sing, I'm like, oh, oh, wow, that was rough. Yeah. So, um, you know, do that. But it, it is good to look at yourself and listen to your calls and to think about how can I get better? Because I can tell you the thing that has helped me most in management of self-storage properties and being able to take stores and turn them around or take a brand new store and, and make it just 
take off. Like most people say, oh, that's not possible. Good managers that sell well, they are gems. And I think if you are good at selling and that you practice your techniques, you can go so far in self-storage and you can continue building on that because selling is something you can use in lots of different industries. You can use it in life. It's just a good thing to have. So practice your presentation. So important. The other thing I like to do is I like to have checklists. And if you guys need any checklists, give me a call because look at all these. I just did little prints of these, but you know, I have where you can take these out and you checklist of things of how, how did the cabinets look, did the cash drawer, how, you know, so it, it has a list and you can customize these to your own needs, but you want to make sure you look to see if they're in good repair or if things need to be replaced. And again, for maintenance, that is so important and for safety measures, great things to do when there's nothing else to do. <laughs> And the other maintenance things, you know, you can look around to see if, you know, you, the tightening of screws around the property, like door handles, drawer handles, kick stops uh, for doors, um, you know, and check your landscaping and water the plants, water the flowers, keep those looking good, especially for the drive-by. Maintaining those pull carts and making sure that they're all working properly and they're, you know, because sometimes they get loose, the handles get a little bit loose and you can just check them and check all your landscaping to make sure that it's getting water and replace any old signs. You know, we talked about the signs a moment ago, but look for those things and note the projects that need to be completed because some things may be too big because like the doors like this, these doors are awful. Look at how chalky and old and crappy they look. <laughs> the crappy is a technical storage term. <laughs> so they're going to be looking much nicer after they get this. I'm going to say that they're doing ever bright on these doors. Um, and I took a picture of that. So there, there are companies out there that have things that fix this and it really does work, but it is a little, you know, maintenance intensive to do. So I don't know that I, I really haven't had manager. I've had managers that have done a door or two, but when I, when it's the whole property, I've hired people to help me do that. Wow, these are recent, this this is one, these are June bugs with their legs all up. You can't tell, maybe that one's turned over, but this was, the, they opened a hallway to show me a space and this was what was on the outside. I, I think that's ridiculous. And this is a, a space where you can clearly see, you know, oh, mouse droppings and whatever else all that stuff is. Looks like, I don't know. <laughs> You have to use pest control. You need to make sure that if you've got these problems that you're calling your pest control company up, if you don't use one and you have these problems, you should get one. I know some managers do their own spraying and stuff, but if it gets too far out of hand, you need to be the person that does that. And I believe me, I've had mouse problems, rat problems, like in a San Francisco store, we had rats that were bigger than my little dogs that I have. I'd show you my dogs, but no, they probably run around the back of me in a few minutes when they get up to get some water or something. So how about security? I always want you to look for security issues. Walk the property, greet people, say hello. I've even had uh, canine um, training done at storage properties that I've had. I've, I've found break-ins. Um, I've had meth labs. Um, uh, I, pretty much, I feel like I've seen it all. I found a boa constrictor in a space. Um, that was just one we opened up to inventory. I didn't, that was not one I no, that was just a weird thing. The, those things are very dangerous. And I'm not sure why anyone, no, I know why that person put it in there because mom told him to get it out of the house. She didn't like it rolling around the house. So remember, make your security rounds, check the hallways, the aisles, um, look for garbage and debris and potential hazards and things. And make sure you're checking those locks to make sure that there's there's no missing locks around the property or inferior locks. Have you seen, I saw a person, you know, like with like those super little small luggage tags, they put those on a unit or maybe another guy put a shoestring on it. And he goes, I called him up. And I was like, you know, you have a shoestring on your space. We need you to put a lock. And he goes, well, I thought you guys had alarms on your doors. I said, we do, but you, you still don't put a shoestring on there. I was like, he had, I think the guy, kid was like, he was a college kid. So I was like, okay. Yeah. You need to put more than a shoestring. I said, him, did you go home without a shoestring? And he said, yeah, actually I did. I thought, well, that doesn't surprise me. Look at this door that, and that just from walk, do a walkthrough and look, someone's tried to break in this space and boy, did they mess up the door and the everything that sucks. I hate those. How about contacting customers and doing collections or doing your, um, just 
it, the sales leads, the, the leads that we get coming in, you've got to constantly check those on a regular basis, check reservations and inquiries or follow up in the software of lead retrieval services that you may have. Some of you may want to send thank you notes out for renting or send an email like that. Thank you for renting and just checks the email to make sure it's a good email. And then you'll know early on if it's not to call the customer. Updating the customer's credit cards that have expired. Um, vacating list. Look to see who's vacating, especially if you're super full and you might be able to call someone that may be on a waiting list. That's a great thing to do. Also touch bases with your past due and lien sale customers. Ask for payments, try to verify the current address, make notes in your storage files. So when you're doing that, make sure you're in your software that you're making notes about all these things. Um, when I do my audits, I look and I'm like, wow, there are no notes in here. This person went delinquent, I went into almost lien sale, well, lien sale area three times and there were no notes. I was like, wow, didn't you call the customers? If you did, it needs to be in your notes. So make good notes or right, check the notes. So other things to, to do, count the petty cash. Uh, so the daily close will go really smoothly. Uh, list of the checks on the deposit slips in preparation for the closing. So if you're, if nothing else to do that way, that night closing will go much quicker. Also the customer rental review, um, do those. For every new customer that's rented, go back and look at those, make sure everything is correct in the software and everything's that is on the rental agreement that the customer wrote. Now that's, and let's, those of you who are digitally doing your, rental agreements, look at those, make sure that the customer signed it, make sure all the information is correct because it's not always correct. Some of you may not be able, that's something the corporate does, but otherwise look for those people that you can actually do rent raises on. Now training, I training is so near and dear to my heart because as th that was my first job in self-storage and clearly I do that now today, <laughs> but watch some training videos for storage management. Do your software, like your storage management software should have all kinds of training videos. I've looked at some of those before. I'm like, wow, I've used uh, like SiteLink software for so many years now. And I learned things by just watching their videos. I'm like, oh, that was a quicker way to do it than I've been doing it. So also look through various reports in your software. Look at your management report, your, like your management summary. It tells you how well the store is doing. Uh, and I always like to look at those things because I'm a little bit of a numbers guru. I like to manage by the numbers. And it's so important to be able to say, wow, we're, we're hundred percent occupied. Well, okay. Let's just say we're 95% occupied, but we're bringing in money as if we're 85. So there's a 10% difference there. Why is that? Oh, you look and, oh, I've been giving away these every, Every single month I've been giving away rent credits to people or I've been giving discounts, those sorts of things contribute to that. So those will help you understand and learn about your reports. So reread the rental agreement. Uh, sometimes, you know, you forget the things in there. Uh, that would be like the very most bored day you have. <laughs> or help, okay, maybe the state lien law might be the other pretty rough day. But it is good to know and understand your lien law, your rental agreement. Um, it, all of those clauses in there are so important, especially the, about the insurance and where we exculpate, you know, everything that we're not responsible for everything you are. So, and reread the employee handbook. I'm sure you'll absolutely stay awake during all of that. But, um, and do webinars. We have, if you go to Skill Check, we have um, webinars on YouTube that you can listen to like this particular webinar. So it's great to find new resources of training and learning and learning is awesome. I think it's great for us. And if you get extremely bored, <laughs> there is a guy that shows on YouTube how he, he put up this video of how he lived out of a storage space, a storage locker. I don't know why they call them storage lockers, but or lockers for two months. And he set this thing, whole thing up. He's got a little sink and, and you can see his hot plate. Uh, he's got storage up top, but he's got some nice knives there. <laughs> oh, but I want you to look at how many views. And okay, I can say I viewed it probably four times. 10 million views. So I think these are 10 million other people that think he's crazy or that uh, want to try this sometimes. So we don't want anyone living out of the space. We know lots of people try to do that. But this guy was clearly organized. And I think uh, he was at a, a U-Haul store. I don't know where it was, but um, he certainly... I, I would have caught it, I for, think for sure, because he was using the electricity from outside the unit. I would have seen that if I'd done a walkthrough. And I think good manager would have caught it before two months for sure. <laughs>
So keep in mind, I want you to be happy in what you do. It's really important to, to love what you do and self-storage I think is uh, interesting because every day is a little different. I'd love you to take pride in your work and your job because so much of what you do is how you feel. So whatever you are, be a good one. Abraham Lincoln, geez, that is old. And that's really so true, isn't it? It's still true. A simple smile or good morning could change someone's entire mood today. Practice being pleasant. And I know a lot of you storage managers out there have people that come in and say hello to you when they're there, or some people come in every day to say hello, get a cup of coffee or water or some candy, <laughs> some something out there at the store that they like. But you know what they like? They like you. And they like talking to you, shooting the bull, talking story, whatever it is, that's part of your job. We want you to be good with the customers. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. And jo Steve Jobs said that, and I think it is true. And thank God I'm not in that business because I think I'd be driving myself nuts, though I probably would be wealthy now <laughs> if I did what Steve Jobs could do and what a brilliant man he was. But I think I, I love what we do. I love the self-storage business and I hope you do too because it makes it more enjoyable every day to do your job. So I wanna send a shout out to um, brilliant things to do when things are slow came from San Diego self-storage managers. They got together and came up with ideas of things that you could do. They had a hundred ideas of things you could do when things were slow. And I just thought that was amazing. And they keep that at their stores and so think, hey, if you're, there's nothing to do, here's stuff to do. And they, and I just think, wow, that was so smart to do that and have managers participate in it. So that is great. And I turned it into a webinar. So that's even more fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this webinar. And remember, we are what we repeatedly do. And excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And that was Aristotle. So it's so old, we have to know it could be true. <laughs> if you need to get in contact, my phone number is 800-374-7545 or uh, quicker than picking up a phone, you could get reach me at carol at skillcheck.com. And thank you so much for listening. We like to be the leaders in training in self-storage and we really would be happy. I'm happy to get any questions you have, storage related questions. I get lots of those. We do audits and our mystery shopping and a variety of consulting things. So if you need help, please give us a call and thank you for listening.